You know, right now we have a huge focus on nutrition for healthy digestion. And one of the things we talk about is the benefit of consuming either probiotics as a supplement, which is absolutely so important for so many people, but also just getting in a lot of foods that contain probiotics. I mean, really, when you look at the word probiotics, I mean, it means for life. It's giving life. We're consuming healthy bacterial cultures, which have been used for centuries by cultures all over the world. When you look at most cultures that I say have really stood the test of time, they've always consumed probiotic laden foods. And it's just important to get a good variety. And a lot of times we don't realize that there's a big variety. Quite oftentimes people think that they just have to have yogurt and yogurt is the best way to get in probiotics. You know, yogurt in general, if you're getting it from the conventional grocery store, it's typically not gonna be organic. It's typically not gonna be full fat yogurt. Uh, it would be pasteurized. It certainly would be homogenized. And it's not gonna necessarily consume, contain a wide variety of bacterial cultures. You're typically just looking at acidophilus and lactobacillus. So we want to look for more ways to get in healthy bacterial colonies into the gut because those contribute do contribute greatly to your digestive processes, breaking down your food and thriving because you know your digestive system uses more energy than any other system in your body. So if your digestive system is not working properly, your energy will be tanked. So that's why it's so vital that we look at healthy uh, bacter uh, healthy bacterial colonies in the body. Um, and just good di di digestion overall. You know, a couple of things that have become very popular in the last couple of years. This is Kavita. Many of, you have, many of you have seen different varieties of kombucha out there. And frankly, kombucha drinks, Kavita drinks, these fermented drinks, they become very, very popular. You know, I like this one because it's very, very low in sugar. Uh, it, all, it has um, some healthy bacterial colonies. However, it also contains things like apple cider vinegar, which is good for your overall health, detoxification, digestion as well. It contains lemon as well. It's a great morning drink. Cayenne pepper as well, which can help to clear you out. Uh, but it's important that if you're gonna get a kombucha from the store, you make sure that it does not have added sugar. I can't believe how many of these bottled beverages that are kombucha beverages that frankly would taste great on their own, but we've added sugar back into them. You know, at the end of the day, this one would contain one gram of sugar, uh, uh, which can be derived naturally from some of the, the plants that are in here. But you'll see some kombucha beverages that are out there will have 10 and 16 grams of sugar. And at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons why we try to not have pop is it's basically sugar water. So avoid added sugars in kombuchas. One question that often does come up is, well, isn't there sugar necessary in order to create a kombucha? Well, the reality is when we've done the deep research into this, when it's done properly, it is true that those bacterial colonies are fed sugar. It would be nice if they were fed organic cane sugar or something that is very, very pure. And basically that carbonation basically is the fermentation as a result of the bacteria consuming that sugar. But at the end of the day, the beverage that you're consuming is not containing straight sugar. You just don't want the added sugar. So that's one way. You know, I also like this one as well. This is called the gut shot. These have become very, very popular. You'll see this at Whole Foods markets just about everywhere. And this is intense. This is not to be consumed as an entire beverage. This is literally just a capful to get in healthy bacterial colonies. It's delicious. You know, I actually like adding this into a salad dressing as well. So if I ever have that moment where I'm consuming something that is a salad and there aren't really any probiotic cultures there, definitely adding in a gut shot, uh, which, which would provide some good probiotics as well. Again, ingredients would come from green cabbage, water, sea salt, caraway seeds, that's it. Plus it's cultured, so you're getting all the good stuff. So there's lots of ways to incorporate that. I will actually mix this in with other salad dressings just to make sure you get some probiotics in there. You know, and then obviously we, all, we can also talk about things like sauerkraut, and kimchi. You know, the big thing is, look at the variety here. I mean, a lot of this comes down to just how they're prepared. This one is, um, uh, it's raw, unpasteurized sauerkraut. It has a beet and ginger uh, flavor to it. This one has a bit more of a kale flavor to it. So again, big thing, look for variety in things like kimchi, sauerkraut. You know, miso is another great way to get in probiotics. And again, this is really uh, basically mashed chickpeas. If you see it, it's mashed chickpeas. It has a brown rice base as well. And again, I think what you'll find is that the actual culture that is included is different from the culture that you would get from some of your other probiotics. Something that you could easily add on to the side of any meal and really you want to be looking at incorporating these all the time. Let's go back to yogurt before we complete this little talk on probiotics. Because again, people think that you get pro probiotics mainly just from yogurt. Listen, when you're consuming dairy, we have always said that you want to consume dairy products that meet a number of criteria. You absolutely want dairy products that are organic. You absolutely want them as full fat as possible. Ideally, you would find them where they are not 
pasteurized. You'd find them where they are not homogenized. That's going to be, depend on the state that you live in because certainly it's, there's greater availabilities depending on what part of the country you are in. And there's other factors. You would want no added sugar, for instance. When you look at these, this would be um, an organic uh, Greek-style yogurt. You know, Greek yogurt on, it, on its own isn't the greatest, but if it's organic, now I might start to think about it. It's just going to be a little higher in protein based on the way it's done. But again, it's also going to add in the bacterial colonies. Now, people often ask the question, how can I get yogurt if I don't do well with dairy? Well, the first thing is, let's not lump all dairy together, right? Because a lot of people do have difficulties with dairy because of the way it's processed. A lot of people do a lot better with pure organic dairy with less homogenization and so forth. But then there's also folks that might do okay with things like goat milk yogurt. So this is a goat milk yogurt. Because of the size of the proteins here, they can often be digested a lot easier. So if somebody doesn't do quite as well with a traditional dairy yogurt, certainly look at something like a goat milk yogurt. I know I can, I've, I've worked with hundreds of clients who've been tested for sensitivities and they often do much better with goat milk. Even you think about something like uh, feta cheese comes from sheep. So it doesn't always have to come from the same type of animal if you're gonna get some type of dairy. Uh, but then there's also this option as well. This is a, this is a, a, a coconut yogurt, which is awesome. So we're basically taking the coconut milk, culturing it, and then creating a yogurt there. And the big thing here is that it's non-sweetened. If you wanna sweeten these things up, just add your own whole fruit. You know, certainly that's gonna provide a great, um, you know, a great addition of flavor. And again, starting with the base is the best possible way. No sugar, great dessert, great add-on, great in smoothies, great for breakfast on its own, or just an everyday snack. So there's a ton of ways to get great probiotics in addition to the rest of your diet and in addition to any type of supplement you might be doing just for good insurance. But if you're looking for more good ways or if you're looking for some of the stores in your local area that might, that might sell some of these um, less popular items that you might not find in the conventional grocery store, make sure you check with your team there at the Max Living Office. I'm sure they have a ton of great ideas that will serve you, your family, and the entire community.